Hey, good morning, everybody. It is good to have you back with us today. We are back in the book of Acts, and we are, man, we're almost done with the book of Acts. Uh, Acts chapter 28 is where we're at today. <clears throat> and so we'll dive into that here in just a few moments. Uh, let me uh, just remind you of a couple things really quickly. One is we do not have our regular Wednesday night Bible studies tonight. Um, we have a special night tonight, so if you're used to coming, still come. We want you to come. Uh, I got a special night tonight. We are doing a spaghetti dinner, and um, our youth are going to be helping serve that. Our student ministry is going to be helping serve that. Uh, our kids are raising money to go to a um, mission trip to North, or not to North Florida, to um, uh, to Kentucky uh, over spring break. Uh, they're going to be traveling to Kentucky to help at a Christian camp there to prepare for summer activities and all the things they have going. And so they're going to be doing some construction and helping, things of that nature. Um, so we'd love to have you come out. Uh, so it's not just a dinner tonight, though. So we've got a dinner at 630, and then immediately after we get done eating, we're all going to go into the sanctuary, and our youth, our student ministry, is going to be leading us in a worship service. And so we're going to be uh, eating some good food, and then we're going to be uh, going in for worship. And so it'll be completely student-led, so our kids are going to be leading us in worship and in devotional thoughts and all that kind of stuff. And so we would love to have you come and join us for that. Um, we are also doing a dessert auction at the end of the evening where we're going to be, uh, we've got a whole bunch of, uh, I don't know, cakes and pies and who knows what else, cobblers that uh, people in our church family have made. And if you've ever had them before, man, they are good. And so uh, we're going to be like doing a, a fun auction with those and so we would love to have you come and join us. It starts at 6.30 tonight. Um, we were planning on doing everything outdoors um, and th in terms of the meal, but because of the rain that's projected and the winds, uh, we are moving everything indoors. So we're gonna have some people downstairs in the fellowship hall, and then the rest of everybody will be upstairs in classrooms when we we're gonna have those set up, and it's gonna be really nice. And uh, the kids are gonna serve us. And so come and join us tonight at 6.30. Uh, it'll be a great time for sure. Um, <clears throat> so yesterday we left off um, with the uh, story of Paul in the book of Acts, chapter 27, where Paul left um, and uh, was uh, he, uh, he was traveling to Rome because he had appealed to, to Caesar so that he could have Caesar hear his case. Um, in terms of uh, defending himself against the accusation of the Jewish people and all the stuff that went on there. Um, and so um, we saw Paul on this travel to Rome and how uh, we, we kind of joked about it, like the idea of jumping from the frying pan into the fire, right? He leaves Jerusalem and then he leaves uh, Agrippa and Festus and all the different guys that he had to appeal to there, thinking like, Finally, I'll get to go to Rome and I'll get my case heard there. But on the way to Rome, there's all these trouble with the tr troubles with the boat and uh, the ship they were on, the storm they in they encountered, and then the 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 the, uh, the ship uh, wrecked on a sandbar and people had to jump into the water and swim to shore and all that kind of stuff. But as Paul had been told in an, in a dream that everybody would be saved, so 276 men uh, were able to be freed from. Um, that sinking ship and made it to shore alive and everything was good. Uh, you would think things get better, um, and in many ways they do for Paul, but but we see right off the bat when he gets on the shore, he gets another thing that, that takes place. But I love this idea, and we're going to read it here. I love the idea that even when those bad things take place, uh, God uses them for good, right? That any time that Satan causes harm for us or he intends harm to come to us god can use that for good we've seen that right that god works the good of those who love him and who are called according to his purpose uh it doesn't mean you're going to escape pain or it doesn't mean you're going to escape hardship it just means that god can produce good out of those things um and there might be a harvest of righteousness for us it might be that he does something good in someone else's life and we'll see how paul made a difference in the life of the people living on the island here in Acts chapter 28. So let me read, just let me just read the story really quickly of what happens, and we'll just talk a little bit about these things. Chapter 28, verse 1, it says, Once safely on shore, uh, this is after the shipwreck, 
uh, we found out that the island was called Malta. The islanders showed us unusual kindness. They built a fire and welcomed us all because it was raining and cold. Paul gathered a pile of brushwood, and as he put it on the fire, on the fire, a viper snake, um, uh, a viper driven out by the heat, fastened itself to his hand. When the islanders saw the snake hanging from his hand, they said to each other, "This man must be a murderer, for he, for though he escaped from the sea, the goddess Justice has not allowed him to live." Verse five. But Paul shook the snake off into the fire and suffered no ill effects. The people expected him to swell up or suddenly fall dead. But after waiting a long time and seeing nothing unusual happen to him, they changed their minds and said he was a god. Uh, that, that's such a cool story, right? So here's Paul, gets off the boat. Uh, this boat's sinking. They get to shore. He's like, oh, man, everything's going to be good now. They got a fire going. It's warm. He goes to put firewood on the fire, and all of a sudden this venomous snake bites him on uh, the hand. And you're thinking, can, can things get worse for Paul? I mean, this everything. If you could, if you could write the story of how many bad things could happen to a person, Paul would be that guy, right? Everything bad happens to him. And so the people initially, when they see this take place, when they see the snake that bites him, they think to himself, "Man, this is like you guys heard. Of, this is like karma. Uh, that he must have done really bad things." And and so even though he didn't die in the sea. Uh, this justice God is going to take him out now by uh, allowing a snake to uh, poison him and he's going to die. Um, that's their mentality, right? That, that he must be dying for a purpose because uh, of wrongdoing. But the, but the uh, snake does not harm him. He is not uh, hurt from this. Um, there's a lot of people that will chalk that up to, well, it really wasn't a venomous snake or or it it, um, it was a dry bite or whatever you want to say, right? And, and dry bites meaning they don't inject any venom in your body. Um, uh, yeah, that's prob- possible. Um, but in, in this setting here, uh, I believe this was a, a God thing. That God had a bigger purpose. And so he allowed Paul to uh, survive this snake bite and have no ill effects from that. The effect of that on the people were that they recognized something special. Now they called Paul... A God, right? Uh, but in their eyes, they recognize there's something supernatural at work here. There's something powerful at work here. They took notice of Paul because he was different. Now, I'm not saying you need to move to West Virginia and do snake charming to make sure that you are different than the world. I'm not saying that. Or Kentucky or any backwoods area that still does that, right? What I'm saying is how are we living our life? Or let me phrase it this way. Are we living our life in such a way that it is impactful to others because they take note of us? Do they take notice of us? Do um, do your neighbors think and look at you and think to themselves, wow, they really live different. Um, they have a different peace about them. They have a different selflessness about them. They are uh, servant-oriented. They are uh, compassionate people. They are generous people in the way they live their lives. Uh, do we have that marked difference in us, right? Um, that, that should be the case if the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us. That we live different, we believe different, we operate different, we react different, we serve different, we are uh, good givers in terms of generosity uh, to people and those people around us. Um, there should be a marked difference about us. And that was certainly the case with Paul, right? They recognize that Paul was so different. Uh, it goes on a little bit further. He goes to uh, the chief official of the island and the chief official welcomed them to his place. They stayed there. Um, and uh, it says that the father's, that the official's father was sick in bed, uh, suffering from a fever. This is verse eight, suffered from a fever and dysentery. Uh, anytime I hear the word dysentery, I know I'm going to date myself here. Uh, I don't know how many of you guys remember playing the game on the computer Oregon Trail, uh, where you had to like travel out to the wild, wild west, and all these things happen to you on this thing. And 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 I don't know why, but it always seemed like anytime I played that, I'd get this alert that says you have died from dysentery. Uh, a horrible thing, right? A horrible thing dysentery is. It's it's. Uh, diarrhea that it that turns bloody and it's just it's a mess right and you dehydrate all this stuff um and uh 
And so Paul goes in to see this man who was dying and brings healing to his life. God allows him to heal his body so that Paul's testimony might ring true in that island. Now, it doesn't tell us a lot um, there in this story uh, about anything that was in th that were in, in any way that people made decisions to follow Jesus, but it does tell him tell us that many of the people who were sick on the island came to Paul and were cured. I can't help but imagine that his testimony of Jesus um, was accepted by many there. It doesn't tell us, but I can't imagine it wasn't because everywhere else he goes, uh, there are believers that begin or people that begin to follow and are believers. Verse 11 through verse 16 talks about Paul traveling on. They finally travel and they finally arrive to Rome. Um, and I love what it says here in verse 14. It says, there we found some brothers and sisters. I love that. Um, then a little bit later in, at the end of verse 15, it says, at the sight of these people, Paul thanked God and was encouraged. There should be encouragement from the body of believers. That when you gather, when I gather, when we all gather together as believers, there should be um, because of the camaraderie, because of the like-mindedness, because of our unity in Jesus, there should be encouragement, right? That as I watch you live your life and as we gather together, I, I need to be encouraged by that. You should be encouraged by, by me. You should be, uh, we should all be uplifted and spur one another on toward love and good deeds, as the Bible says. Um, that is the beauty of the body of Christ, that we are one in Jesus, that we're all, um, we all recognize where we've come from, from our sinful, broken past, and now we are on this journey with Jesus, and we should encourage one another. That was what was going on with Paul. Paul had longed to go to Rome uh, to share the gospel. Uh, obviously, it wasn't under these conditions that he uh, kind of saw himself going to Rome, but he's going to make the most of it, and we're going to see that here at the end of this chapter. So tomorrow morning, uh, 9 a.m., we'll be back at it. We are going to finish the book of Acts tomorrow. And um, I'll tell you a little bit of the end story of this because... The story, uh, the book of Acts ends, and we kind of leave the story of Paul unresolved. We'll we'll look at a couple other scriptures tomorrow that give us evidence of what went on with Paul, and we know history uh, has given us some indications of what happened to Paul at the end of his life as well. So, um, so let me pray for us, and then we'll then we'll wrap up. God, thank you that you are always using our story. God, as you were using Paul, you used him to bless others. You used him to change lives. God, you allowed him to experience some really horrible things, things that the enemy would cause, that would use for harm and for uh, to distract us. Uh, but God, you turned those things for good, and you allowed really amazing things to transpire through the life of Paul, even though he went through incredible hardship. And so God, I pray that you would use us, help our story to impact others as well, that people would see a marked difference in us and the way we live and how we operate and how we believe that they might be drawn to a walk with you. We love you, God. We pray for tonight's uh, dinner and the youth night. I pray, God, that our students would just be able to uh, lead us and encourage us in what they are prepared to do. We love you, and I thank you for your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, have a good, hope you have a good day, and we'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Also, join us tomorrow or uh, tonight, if you can, at 6.30 for... Um, our meal and uh, worship night with the kids. So uh, God bless. We'll see you soon.